All right, so let's look at these curves right here. And we want to figure out what the mean is and what the standard deviation is for each of these curves. So let's take a look. Now remember the mean is where the center is and the standard deviation is where the inflection point happens. So if you look at the gray curve, that's curve number one, its mean is at zero. And curve number two, its mean is at three. Okay, so let me type that up. So curve number one had a mean of zero, approximately. And curve number two had a mean of three. Great. Okay, what about standard deviations? Well, the standard deviation is where a, the inflection point happens, which is about one away for both of these. So standard deviation is one for curve number one. It's actually one for curve number two as well. And there we have it. Now, why do they have the same standard deviation? We can see they actually have an identical shape. The shape is what is determined by the standard deviation. So when they have the same shape like this, that means their standard deviations are the same. What's different about the two curves is their center. The center on the gray curve is at zero. The center on the dashed curve is around three. So their sh centers are shifted apart from each other, but their standard deviations are not. They are the identical because they have the same lovely shape. Now let's look at part B here. Okay, well, these two curves have the same center because they both have a peak at zero, but they have very different shapes. So both curves are going to have centers at zero, but curve one, oops, I should have labeled it. Sorry about that. Curve one is the gray curve. Let me fix that. There we go. Now I have them labeled. So again, curve one is the gray one and curve two is the dash one, just like the one, the problem above. They both have a mean of zero. Now curve one looks like the inflection point's happening right about where my cursor is, so that's about two. So, and again, how am I eyeballing that? Well, it's an art, but really what you're doing is you're looking for where, it, up here at the top of the peak, it's kind of bowl shaped down, concave down. And over here at the tails, it's concave up. So somewhere in the middle, it switches. And it's usually about, if you think of the bottom of curve is at zero and the top of the curve is at point, point 0.20, it's a little bit above the 0 0.10 mark. So 0 0.10 is kind of right there. It's up a little bit above that. So that's about two, if you look at the x-axis, about two. Now, the black dashed curve, let's see here. So there's concave up. About halfway would be right there. So it's going to be a little bit higher than halfway. So you take the top of the curves at 0 0.1, the bottom of the curve at 0, 0 0.05 would be halfway. You want to go a little bit above that, so it looks like it's about 4 for this one. So I'm going to make a standard deviation of about 4. Notice it's a bigger number. That's why it's a wider curve. See how the dashed curve is wider than the skinny narrow curve? That's getting back to what I was saying back here. Oopsie. Come back. That the larger your standard deviation, the wider your curve. The smaller your standard deviation, the narrower your curve. Right? All right. Now, you're going to be drawing a lot of these by hand. So when you draw them by hand, you want to pay attention to several things. One, you want to draw a graph that is symmetric around your mean. Make sure it's a symmetric graph. Make sure it looks like a normal curve. Number two, you want to make sure you have a horizontal asymptote at your x-axis. Don't have the curve cross over the x-axis. It has to kind of surf along it and disappear. One, your first standard deviation falls at your inflection points. When you put down your standard deviation, make sure it happens just a little bit above halfway from the top of the curve to the bottom of the curve. That'll be your standard deviation. Don't make the standard deviation too skinny or too fat and keep it consistent. Keep your vertical lines and your spacing, the tick marks, consistent. Otherwise, you will be in big trouble. Right? It has to be that that number, standard deviation number, is consistent throughout the entire curve. All right, we're going to pause right there, and I'm going to do the next problem in the next video. So I'll see you back here then.